Hello, I'm Tijani Musa. And I'm Yasmin Musa. And this is how we're doing it. Welcome to our How We're Doing It. Here we share stories about our journey and experiences of being first generation college graduates, our family, buying our first home, moving across the country, and living a debt free lifestyle. We do so in an authentic, fun, and educational way to help other first generation immigrants with similar paths. So, what we got going on today? What are we discussing today? Okay. So today's topic is about trying to conceive and our journey around that. Conceive meaning like trying to have a baby, that kind of thing? Yes, yes. So the term trying to conceive is really talking about couples that are actively attempting to get pregnant. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's get to it then. All right. Let's get started. Hold Um, on, hold on, hold on. Let's just mm -hmm. tell the listener that you do not want to miss this one. If you are <laughs> if you are in a, a place in your life where you think you and your partner are ready to take that next step of bringing a baby into this world, this is the episode you want to listen to. So do not skip. Listen to it from start to finish because we are about to explain to you exactly how we did it. Let's go. I think another thing to keep in mind, too, though, is that we are not medical professionals at all. We are just sharing our experience and some of the things that we tried um, when we were trying to get pregnant and some of the information that we gathered. Um, because I think the, the biggest mis- misconception that we had when we started is that we thought it was going to happen immediately. Like we made up our mind today that we're ready to have a baby. And by tomorrow, after we have sex, we'll be pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very important caveat because like what Yasmin was saying, that is a huge conception, misconception. <laughs> we're, we're talking about conception. So now I'm using the word conception. <laughs> so yeah, that that's a, that's a good caveat. Thank you yeah. for mentioning that. Yeah. I think the biggest thing around it was like, we really needed to inform ourselves. It was something that was new to us. I remember when we just, first off, our timeline, right? Like we had this specific timeline of when we were going to have a baby. Right. Um, to Johnny was in grad school at the time. So we said, we're going to start trying in September 2021. Because mm-hmm. that would mean that I would have a summer baby like summer 2022 around the time that you would have been done with grad school right right right. the baby the baby was supposed to come around the time i'm graduating right and then if y'all remember maybe you don't but (laughs) the baby was a graduation (laughs) (laughs) right right exactly (laughs) but we moved up our timeline and i think the main reason why is because we were ready like at that point we you know I think as a as a woman, like I was so ready for a baby. Like when we first got married, I was like, "Oh, I I um, I do want to have kids, you know, but I do want to wait a couple years. I want to enjoy my marriage, get to know you as my husband, really right. set a good foundation for our marriage, and then we'll bring our children into the picture." Mm-hmm. And at that point, we had been married what like two years, yeah, almost two years, about two years, yep. And so I was just ready to try. I was also in a place in my with my career where I was, you know, very comfortable and um, I was, you know, very successful and I felt like it was a good time for me to bring a baby in. Um, I know for you, it was a little bit different because you were still in grad school and dealing with all of that. Are you saying that I was not successful? <laughs> no, I'm not saying you weren't successful. I'm saying you had more on your plate. Like at, okay. by the time we started trying like i had already finished grad school so i was in a different stage of my life right right it's okay (laughs) it's okay you were making more money you were you you were the breadwinner i'm not shy to say that (laughs) period exactly give credit when it's due okay but you know i think moving up our timeline was definitely something that was a good decision for us to make like we made that decision together you know ultimately and then you know started to try for a baby. So the very first thing I did is I went to my doctor, um, my OBGYN, and I told her, okay, my husband and I are ready to start trying. And I'll never forget the first thing she said is like, okay, well, you know, just to educate yourself a little bit on that, um, you guys only need to have sex every other day. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I thought the more sex I have, the more chances of getting pregnant. She was like, no, 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 no. You don't want to do that. Like, it was something along the lines of you got to give the sperm time to replenish. Yeah, so yeah. I had to, you know, that that was like, 
a change for us because we were we thought oh shoot we should be in the bed as often as possible <laughs> right right you would think right but yeah, she but she was it right it makes sense it makes yeah. sense um and then the other thing she told me is start taking your prenatals so uh, actually prenatals are recommended for women even when you're not trying actually like as long as you're like of childbearing age you should apparently be taking prenatals right and i didn't know that i i wasn't taking any but then when she told me if you're going to start trying you should take some um i was like okay i'll you know i'll definitely um bring that up you know to my husband and we'll start taking you know prenatals not that he needed to uh, yeah exactly yeah yeah let's be clear <laughs> with that one <laughs> just me but still you were there to help hold me accountable absolutely of when i needed yeah. to take them yep um and then talking a little bit more about the type of like prenatal so one thing that i found out like one thing you guys need to know about me is when I am like very passionate about something or I'm determined to get it done, like I will com completely to a point where um, maybe it's not healthy, <laughs> but I kind of <laughs> um, obsess over this thing for that specific time. So I yeah. wanted to know everything I could about um, like trying to conceive and how I could help my body get pregnant, basically, Yeah, w how I can make that easier for us and one thing that i found out is that in your prenatals they recommend that you have folate not folic acid mm. so folate is a natural form of vitamin v b9 mm -hmm. in food while folic acid is just synthetic one person that i followed um on social media i think at the time i just followed her on youtube mm -hmm. um and she was the one that kind of introduced me to explain really well like the difference between folic acid and folate and how you really needed that folate in your body right um and she explained how t for your eggs to be optimum quality you want to start taking your prenatals as early as possible before you start trying so that you give your your body the time to absorb that vitamin and mm -hmm. for um you know your your eggs to really be that optimum quality and it's all got to do with the folic versus folate acid thing right um then what were some other things we did i remember so the person's name is um she's her name is fertility homeopath um and i have to give her a shout out because she at the time you know like i really did not know much about trying to conceive and mm -hmm. she was kind of that person that I, I would listen to her videos and like take notes and you know try different things like i remember after seeing one of her posts um one of her videos you and i started I guess eating a little bit differently, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just being more like healthy. But then for me, I decided to reduce my caffeine intake. Right. Um, immediately, basically. So I was having instead of just like a regular cup of coffee, I'd have like decaf coffee. Right. Um, then she always recommended like get as much sleep as you can, like mm -hmm. try like foods that have omega three in it like olive oil um and then i'll never forget like the main point she always emphasized was to make sure that you did not stress out and that was so so hard for me because i stress out about literally everything yep and i was so stressed out because like we said like i just thought oh my god i'm you know, like we started trying yesterday, I should be pregnant like already, you know? <laughs> and when that didn't happen, when like month after month, my, my period was still coming, I was so confused as to why. Right. And then we started questioning like, what is wrong? You know, like I was, I would question like, is it me? Like what's wrong with my body? And then I think I even like put some of that stress and anxiety on you like mm -hmm. with is there something wrong with you like you i know you felt some type of way too yeah i was gonna go to the hospital and check <laughs> <laughs> i was like is mula shooting blanks or what's going on so i was like man i need to go check up you know what i'm saying <laughs> but um yeah that that's absolutely um it, it's um it's, it's one of those things it's like they said don't stress out but you have this uh um, idea in your head when things are supposed to happen and when they don't happen the way you envision them, it brings a level of stress, right? 
And then uh, obviously that is internal. And then also that's at home. And then you look at the external factors, you know, like your friends uh, that uh, that got married after you and um, they start like, uh, they share like, okay, we just did it once and all of a sudden we're pregnant. And that external things, as much as you don't want to put it in your head or in your mind, also affects your reaction to um, um, the the process of trying to get mm-hmm. pregnant. Yeah. Did you did you think you you had any external factors that you think um, also impacted you in your head? I thought you brought it up because I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did you? <laughs> I mean, definitely. Okay. You, you know, you start seeing people around you having babies left and right. I think when you're paying attention to it, right. all of a sudden everybody has, it, you know, but I think all along people are having babies and you just maybe hadn't noticed. Right, right. And and the crazy thing is that once you are in the, you've made up that decision to actually start having the thought of trying to have a baby, you know what crazy thing happened after that? You just see babies everywhere. Like for me, I just see babies everywhere everywhere like i was like were this baby there or were they not there when we were when i wasn't thinking about babies and then all of a sudden now we're trying and i just see babies all over the place and i just want to grab them and steal them those type of things were happening to me okay we are not we were we never thought about stealing anybody's baby to oh be okay clear. okay I, we never thought about that maybe the maybe it was in my head was definitely there we were seeing babies everywhere baby fever yeah, I guess you could call it. But I think baby fever is more like you're longing for a baby. Like you really want. I don't know that seeing a baby everywhere. It, you you were just paying more attention to it. Okay. that's what you wanted. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was in my head then. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah. So, um, going back to like some of the things that we considered when uh, we have made up the decision to to start uh, preparing for for the baby we considered the the health of uh yasmin and 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 she was mentioning we started you know uh eating differently she started taking different vitamins to prepare her body um because uh ensuring that her health and my health uh in good health you know helps uh in in preparing her body for for what to come and um we also talked about you know finances Finances yeah. is a very important uh, topic when you are in the uh, conversation uh, of having babies because babies can be super expensive. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, talking about finances and uh, evaluating our financial status, including the cost for prenatal care, childbirth, baby essentials and ongoing child care and all of those things, all of these things were a, a factor in our budget. So we highly discuss finances what other things that did you think you know we talked about um i mean at the time like we were in a very small space so we even discussed like how we were going to make room for the baby yeah because our we were in a small ish apartment like we just had like the one bedroom and then an office basically right and so and you worked from home yep and you were a student so you needed that office space yeah so it was like where are we gonna put the baby <laughs> <laughs> that that should be a whole different uh, episode of uh when the baby was actually here how we mm. managed to <laughs> sleep in the same room with the baby so and and another thing that i also wanted to you know bring up is the emotional readiness right parenting is a significantly emotional thing and uh it takes up a toll on your body so reflecting on the emotional readiness and uh, the potential challenges and joy that parenthood brings um and having that open communication with your partner about the expectations and the uh, styles of uh parenting and that comes uh we 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 obviously did what we always encourage people to do that premarital counseling it helped a lot um we were able to discuss our parenting styles and that type of things did you think that was also significant i mean yeah because i think that was part of like what i mentioned earlier about how i really wanted our marriage to have a good foundation we, right. before we brought the kids into the picture right yeah. And uh support system is huge. Um Oh yeah. And, you and, want you want your mom tribe. You want people who are in the same season of life as you yep. because you know, I think at, at the time like you and I were one of the few that 
we're having babies, you know, like we were just in a different stage. Like we were married, we we're having be, you know, getting re- ready to have a baby. Right. And like a lot of our friends weren't even married. Right. Some of them didn't even have like relationships. Right. right. <laughs> so, it, you know, you're in a different season of life at that point. And so you need people around you that are, that understand what you're going through um, and that can help you navigate some of those challenges. And and speaking of friends and challenges, lifestyle changes, right? Because having a baby can impact your lifestyle significantly. And just like what Yasmin was saying, sometimes some of your friends understand it and some of your friends don't because of the season of their life they're in and the season of our life that we're in. We were in a, in a season where we were uh, preparing to bring another life to this world. So that lifestyle changes is also a significant thing to discuss with your partner as well. Because the things that you used to do when you were, when it was just me and you, all of a sudden could change when the baby is here. Because now you have to consider the baby as well. Yeah, absolutely. And go ahead. Um, One other thing that I was going to bring up is um, right before, the month that we got pregnant actually was um, I because I was stressed out a lot about it, I started meditating a lot. Right. Um, and I found these like affirmations that basically followed your period cycle. Yeah. And I remember I would do them every night mm-hmm. and I would just, I don't know, it would just help really relax me and um, kind of like push some of that stress that I had away. Right. I was also working out. Um, and I think that helped, you know, for me, I know that definitely helps um, just, with my mental health in general. Right. And then um, I was, you know, resting as much as I could. I remember um, I was fearful. Like the month that we found out we were pregnant, it was in the winter. So there had been snow. And I remember I was like fearful to do activities because I was like, what? You know, like we, I knew we were trying. So I was like, what if I was pregnant already? Um, I'll never forget like that February 14th, um, we found out we were pregnant on what, like February 17th? Yeah, like middle of February, yep. It was mid-February, yeah. Um, but I remember we went on a hike for Valentine's Day, and it had iced the night before. Yep. And I was so scared I was going to fall, so I was like walking all safely. <laughs> 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 we should have just skipped it. I don't know why I was pushing it. But I had a feeling like, I don't know, those affirmations for me... Um, I feel like really helped me speak my baby into existence. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just felt positive, you know, and I, I, I the biggest thing I want to say is like, I feel like I had fun. I was having fun that month and I was yeah. less stressed right. than I had been all the months before yeah. and less worried and just kind of letting things be. And that's how I ended up you know, actually pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. That's a significant thing. And so like, uh, from a, a, a husband point of view, right. So for the husbands that are listening to this, they may ask or boyfriends, all boyfriends, or all partner, uh, significant other, uh, they may ask, so how can, uh, the man be, uh, of support during this journey? And, um, what I would say is the way that it worked out for Yasmin and I is I was there for her emotionally. Um, like when she was talking about, you know, what she she had in her head that, you know, we're going to do this and it's going to happen fast. But it wasn't happening the way we had envisioned it. Right. So it was God's doing God's plan. It was taking time. And so whenever the, the month, you know, her time of the month comes, she's emotional about it. So I'm like there physically emotionally to support her and then for my own part of uh preparing for this journey i also try to keep myself you know healthy so that you know when i'm shooting my my shot they don't come uh, blank you know what i'm saying so i'm also eating healthy with her and preparing myself to keep my you know my stuff you know healthy and strong you know what i'm saying you remember i would send you to work with like a Ziploc bag full of almonds and walnuts. Oh yeah, man. The <laughs> the amount of walnuts and, 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 and nuts that I've eaten, man. I'm telling you. You literally man. need as a male, you literally need to eat nuts to help your nuts produce babies. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, but I so it says it's it's the nutrients that are linked to healthier sperm, like omega three fatty fatty acids. Right. So eat those nuts. And I ate them. I ate them. 
lots yeah. and lots of them <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think it was like changes for both of us and right. um just kind of meeting each other where we were and just being each other's support system because i know i was carrying more more of that stress because you had other stressors yeah. at that time with grad school and work and everything else right right yeah so those those were most important things that you know we we thought about you have any other important things that you know people should consider um i think you know to just love on your body mm -hmm. and if you're trying you know um we've been there it wasn't f a fast process right and it definitely wasn't something that we expected to take long and so i just want you to know that it's completely normal yeah um it actually takes healthy couples six months to a year to get pregnant right um to don't give up. Keep trying. Um, make sure you're giving your body enough time to replenish. Right. Um, and definitely make sure you're having fun along the way because it's easy to get very frustrated, um, stressed, very um, worn down, and then it it it, be, it kind of becomes like a tedious mm -hmm. task. But it's know? supposed to be fun. It is supposed to be fun. Like right. go out on dates. Oh gosh, that that month like before we got actually got pregnant like mm -hmm. we were just having fun like you were taking me out on dates more often right um we were just doing all the things i remember playing out in that in the snow going on that icy hike like i feel like all those things really contributed to the fact that it just happened um i remember oh yeah this this is wild too um that month i i actually thought I was having a second period because I was bleeding and my period had just ended. Yeah. And then it turned out to be implantation bleeding, but I had no idea. I really thought I was having a second period and I remember bawling my eyes out because <laughs> I was like, oh my God, like I thought this was the month that I was going to get pregnant and right. here I am with my period again. <laughs> so Man. just be patient. Just love yourself, love right. your body. Right. You know, your, your body knows what it's doing and for all those couples, you know, who are trying and, you know, who just have not been successful you know if after a certain amount of time you have not been able to conceive um definitely go to your doctor um and seek medical help um yeah it's it's you know it's completely normal and it's a, what a lot of couples have to do there's so many fertility options now yeah nowadays. different times different times and uh, we did a lot of praying. Uh, don't forget to pray, 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 pray. is very important too. And uh, remember, every person and every situation is unique. Take your time to discuss these aspects with your partner and make informed decisions based on what feels right for the both of you. And um, when, uh, when, when you have these discussions, communications, and having fun, like what Yasmin is saying, positive positive things happen and lots of prayers so that's that's pretty much what we we did and we hope that you know if we did it for sure uh lots of prayers it would happen for you as well so we're sending all the fa fairy dust and baby dust whatever you call it sending all of those positive vibes away we love right. you that's right and uh, if you find any value in this episode please share with uh someone else and leave us any feedback that you have so we can get better thank you so much Chicken mama. Bye bye. Bye bye.